Okay, hello everybody, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2, where we are gonna check my mail first. Commander, you received a new yeah. message at your private terminal. Yeah. Okay. Um. From. Oh yeah. Bot Smash Bot here. Commander Shepard, Mr. Dina offered to pass on a message for me. I wish to get to again express my thanks for your assistance in retrieving my wife's body. While nothing can ever banish the pain of losing Neuralia. Being able to see that her body was treated properly helped me more than you can imagine. I've opened the restaurant that my wife always wished to start back on Earth. Neuralia's picture hangs on the wall and Alliance soldiers eat for free. It is the least I can do to honor the courage with which both you and my wife have served humanity. Sincerely, Sumesh Bhatia. Well, I hope that you can uh, keep business like that, but it's really sweet of you. It really is. Uh, anything? That Kasumi is hey, 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 hey. to the crew. I can see why she's good at her work. She never reveals anything meaningful about herself. It's all on the surface. It'll be a challenge getting to know who she really is. Anyway, how may I help you, Commander? How are they? Is there anything I should know? Nothing right now. Okay. Anything else, Commander? That'll be all. I'll be here if you need I anything. I forget that I should come talk to her whenever I acquire new people because then I can just kind of get like a little fluff text on her, you know? All right, so... We'll go talk to Kasumi, too. I forgot. We should probably go talk to her. I'm just... I don't know. I got her at the very end last time, because I... Last time I played, it was just kind of like a last-minute decision to get her. And... Like... So it's just weird to have her at the beginning. I feel like the game's almost over right now. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is weird. This is weird. Why these colors? If I had if I had this on the PC, I would get a mod to change the colors on the loading screens at least. Let's see. She is in here? Yes. Who's in Okay, that's crew quarters, right. Okay. Hello. People are talking out there. And I hear it all. One thing I was kind of bummed about is that you don't get like like usually when you when you come talk to a crewmate there's like a little cutscene thing like a cinematic y type thing where like it looks like you're in a cinematic but you're just having dialogue choices and you can still like you can dialogue choice the crap out of people even if you've repeated you know it's just repeating the same thing over and over but Kasumi you don't I get to do that travel hidden away in cargo bays it's nice to be able to look out a window for a change. And this is one of my favorite things about this ship, is the- Whoa, I got in first person for a second! Nice! The freaking observation decks. Like, when I first saw these, I- I- I was so excited, and you know, like, I just remember having this really weird moment where I, like, I was like, you're like, oh, it's so cool, and then you look down, and you realize, like, there's- you, you know air quote nothing beneath you everything's beneath you but it's like we are a tiny dust moat floating in space and like the significance like I don't know like like you don't feel significant but at the same time you can feel really significant like but the fact that space is gonna be there regardless I don't know but it's like you know Shepard's like supposed to save the galaxy or whatever but it almost feels like you know, this is gonna be here regardless of what we do. We're just like ants scurrying around in an ant hill of space. You know? Mess Sergeant Gardner might just be an evil genius. <laughs> Emphasis on the evil. People think he's a bad cook on purpose, like he's trying to teach them a lesson. <laughs> they think his ramen is okay, but it's really hard to ruin ramen. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to do with myself. Not much call for thievery aboard a ship. Yeah, I feel like, I don't, like, Kasumi is, would be good if, like, I could send her out to do stuff. Having her with me, like, in the field, I think, maybe isn't the greatest idea. Come back later. I'm sure I'll have more to talk about. And I'm really excited to get maybe more of her fluff text stuff, though. You know, like, having her from the beginning, maybe she'll say stuff about other people. Like, I don't know. Oh, yeah, this place! I think this is actually supposed to be a remake of the Pleasure Pod. I have a Mass Effect art book, and it shows you the little pink pods that are, like, around, like, in the Asari Consort Chambers, in Shaira's Chambers. Those are Pleasure Pods, what they're called. And you can pour liquor, like, radioactive liquor for yourself. It's great. Right, let's, let's get some of these. That painting has a special place in my heart. An art collector hired me to steal it. When I got there, ah. the painting was gone. On the way out, I saw it being hauled off by another thief. I 
chased him down, tackled him, and took the painting. That's how KG and I met. <laughs> we never did turn it into our employers. Oh, I love it. I love it. She's got such personality. And this, this endears me to, this endears her to me more than, I, than anything Don't else. Don't laugh. I like those books. Romance novels, crime novels, the classics. There's well, I grew something up on. about the feel of actual paper in your hands. The there smell. The smell. It's relaxing. It truly KG is. He used to find books for me while on the job. Some of these are more valuable than the objects he was hired to steal. It's so weird to think that, like, this is unusual. But, like, anywhere else in the ship, like, if, and if you didn't have Kasumi here, like, there would be no real books. Like, it's just not a thing. Everything is, like, holographic, hologram, tablet-y type things, you know? Which is kind of the way things are kind of going. But I don't think books will ever lose, like, actual physical books will ever lose their importance. That's my favorite piece. Painted for me by a child prodigy. She was the cutest thing. She was kidnapped by slavers who hoped to sell her on Omega. I wasn't about to let that happen. I set up an idea as a buyer's rep to get a special tour of the slaver's vessel. Once aboard, I freed the girl and smuggled her off the ship. She painted that for me on the way home. I'll never forget how it felt to watch her work. That's an amazing story to me. Like, I don't know. I wonder what it is, like... She's being, like, this girl was just saved, a prodigy. I was like, why would you steal a child prodigy for as a slave? Because I'm thinking, like, manual labor, labor slave, you know? But then there's, like, the quote, quote, high-quality slave trade, which is, like, you know, people that you'd buy basically to put in a canary cage to show off. But I don't think, I don't think a child prodigy would have done well in a cage, you know? So... And I, I think she she never mentioned, at least as far as I'm aware, she never mentions that this was a job. I think she heard about it, thought it was wrong, and just went and did it herself. Like, she wasn't being paid to save this girl. She just saved her on, on her own. I stole that on the day, believe it or not. Who is it? The big museum play it, not play it. Artifacts from Earth going on. Rake. Home. Very high security. KG dared me to steal this. So I broke in. Hack the security, put a few guards to sleep, and replace the piece with a worthless duplicate. They never knew the difference. My first museum job. Nowhere near the last. Rake Shrangan. Is that... Oh, there's like a shadow. I do not recognize that name. Maybe I should. I don't know. I know I was an English major for a long time, so I know a lot of the, the names of, like, philosophers and stuff. But that's not one that's ringing... It's kind of ringing a bell as the guy who wrote the Jungle Book, but it's not. It just kind of looks familiar. The Red Rose. That used to be my calling card <laughs> when I first started out. In place of whatever I took, I left a single Red Rose. It wasn't until I met Keiji that I realized how silly it was. He had a way of making you realize when you were just being sentimental. Ah, uh, well, I think it's fun. Like, you start out like, I don't know, she's just starting out, you know? Like, it's fun. But, you know, you can, you can either say you could wise up or, like, as long as she's still having a good time, you know? I don't think it was really her being... I think it was. It was, like, the romantic notion of, like... She was, like, seeing, like, the, the romance version... Romanticized version of a thief, you know? So, it is funny. Let's give this to you, bucko. Commander, those provisions you provided were perfect. I owe you. I've already thrown together some of my calamari gumbo. Calamari... Here, oh, boy. I'm like, oh, well. Truth told, it's based on an Asari recipe. Seems a little cannibalistic <laughs> to me with the tentacle heads and all, but they ain't no good grub. Anyway, thanks again. You really came through. <laughs> That's awesome. I like calamari. What is that? Oh, that's Edie's, yeah. Okay. Chakwas! How may I help you, Commander? I have got your brandy. I have a present for you, We're Doc. starting this trip out Sir's right. ice brandy? You didn't. 
<laughs> Thank you. That smile. I almost regretted not opening that original Shepard, bottle. Shepard, don't do it. Don't smile I like could. that. I won't make the same mistake again. Why don't we open this bottle right here, right now? The male you Shepherd. The male Shepherd smile there is the creepiest thing I've ever seen. By the way, you crack open the bottle. I'll get the glasses. Hey, man. I just woke up from a two-year coma being dead. <laughs> I Alenko's biotic oh, my arm. And broken Jenkins' back. But Jenkins pops up and yells, that I like that smile. Awesome. <sighs> oh, Jenkins. Soldiers like him make the Alliance great. Cerberus lacks the same enthusiasm. They tend, I think Cerberus tends to have, like, the fanatics, you know? Like, the Alliance, you get people from everywhere. Cerberus attracts a certain type of person, and they're not gonna be like Jenkins. You know? With your service record, you could have gotten a tour of duty on any Alliance ship. Why'd you really leave? Why'd you really Maybe leave? Maybe it's less about leaving and more about staying. As a military doctor, I mostly treat people who are in bad shape. Often they die. And if I can help them, they move on. Either way, they leave. I was a little confused about this conversation in the beginning. But I think I'm starting, like, when I, even, like, the first, second time, I didn't really get it. But the, the less about leaving and more about staying. But... I think I get Don't you it have now. Any friends or family? No, not lacking friendship. Just stability. Jeff. Yep. Joker will always have Rolick syndrome. He would never admit it, but he needs my help, and he always will. I wish it weren't, but sadly, it's true. I, uh, I think. It's not necessarily he who needs her, but her who needs him. And I don't, I don't think she's in love with him. I don't know, I don't know, like, I, again, I don't go to forums and stuff a lot. I don't go to, like, Tumblr a whole lot to, like, read fan theories and stuff. And maybe I should, but, um, I don't, there's probably people who's already, you know, really analyzed this conversation in depth and stuff, but, um, I just think... She's an older woman with no family, you know, no kids. She's she's a career woman, which is fantastic. So Shepherd, but she just she does the flying around in spaceships thing. I think stability is a big thing. She needs to know that she will always be needed by a familiar face, like not just needed by people who are coming and going. You, there's certain people that you want to be with, you know, like, I'm, I'm not saying, I just think, I think that the relationship between her and Joker is fairly complicated, but you, I don't think you see anything else after this pertaining to it, so. Treating Joker gives you a kind of stability. So does this ship, even if it's a copy. Or, hell, maybe it's you, Shepard, our removable center. A place for a person to stop and catch her breath. Or maybe I'm just happily drunk. <laughs> would it hurt if it was simple like that for once? No, it would not. I've actually never done that option. I thought it would end it, and I so I always chose one of the toast options. But let's do let's do that. Here's to simply being happily <laughs> drunk. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Uh, I think my shepherd can get behind that. Look at, he's like the, what is it, the mess sergeant out there is just staring at us with devil eyes. And my shepherd's arm was like up really awkwardly. That was like really painful looking. Oh, hey. You all right there? At least I'm, uh, I can walk. Woo. Uh, no, I think shepherd, shepherd needed that and so did Chakwas. We both live high stress lives and it's a good time to, Take a chill pill, bit. Hey, let's go see if my fish are, are, are around. I think I'm not drunk anymore. That's good. Captain's cabin. Team members. None. You're darn right. It's my space. Mine. All mine. Talk with her regularly. Woohoo! I'm in the most vulnerable place on the ship. 
Oh, we could customize my armor. Oh, I think I can. Oh, my fish! I was, like, looking, and then I wasn't. These are really pretty ones. I do like them. I guess I could get a bunch, but I don't know. I like, I kind of like the simple, but I also like, if, they, if I could get more plants, I think I would like that, too. Oh, I should feed them. Feed you guys. Yay, I'm not a bad owner. But I love I love that they have this picture up. It's so it's kind of creepy, but it's also kind of awesome. Oh, and I got the uh, sorry dreadnought. That's good. I wish it would kind of tell you on what each one was, but hope I guess they're hoping you can keep track of it. I don't think anything goes here. Oh, I do have books. I didn't realize. Score. They don't even bother giving them names or anything. It's fun sometimes. Deus Ex, uh, Human Revolution, has books everywhere, and it's fun to read the titles. It kind of tells you about the person. Mostly about Jensen, because that's who it it is, you know, whose books you're looking at. <laughs> Let's see if I can uh, customize my armor. Oh, okay, the N7 helmet increases hell. I think I usually don't wear a helmet, but, oh, they both give you 5% health, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll probably have to wear the helmet. Yeah. Because, uh, it's hardcore. Um, increases power damage by 3% or increases health. I do, I like, I do like the look of that one. There's some that I don't, I think, well, it's not, it's not the Aegis, it's like, shoot, I can't think of it, but there's one that I don't like. And this basically just, yeah, adds an ammo pack on the side. Oh, I did, I do, I, I like these. I think this is basically what I wore last time. And it seemed to work really, I think even with the, yeah, even without that one, but I really like the veiny pattern. I don't know, it reminds me, it kind of reminds me of Saren. Is that what it is? Uh, oh, I, do, I have other, wait, okay, whoa. Uh, okay. Right, this I'm always like, I don't know, doesn't, it just changes like the shine, I don't know what material you're talking about. Tin, the pattern, nah. Oh, okay, I didn't, I didn't even notice that they're at the top of the helmet. Whoa, camo, except not camo. That one's kind of cool. Should I change it up a little bit? I don't know, I, I always, I like the, the colors, for sure though. The tint. Oh, okay. Wee. I could do that. Ooh, that looks cool. I do like that. Ooh. Cool. Hey. What? Oh. Okay, that's cool. I didn't realize it would change all that too. Dang. Did I could change my lights. No. Okay, you get to change your lights in Mass Effect Three. Tint, the main tint, yeah, no, we ain't messing with that, unless there was, like, a darker gray, but, whoa, just, like, bright red everywhere. The dark red's nice. Ooh, that is nice. Ooh, oh, I like that. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> we look bad here. Look at that. <laughs> wow. We look nice. Shepard. Shepard, you're looking good, girl. Looking good. Okay, I think that's it for the ship. Uh, journal. Yeah, we just gotta go to Omega now. How exciting. How exciting. Oh, should I go? No, I want to just go to Omega. Like, should I go chat with Miranda and Jacob? But I don't think anything. Well, no, I didn't talk to Miranda yet, have I? Since being on the ship. Shoot. I should probably go talk to Miranda. I'll go talk to Miranda really quick. Dang nab loading screens. Okay, she's down there. 
Oh, I don't know why. I should have popped in the top. I think I realized, I, for some reason, I was like, the behind the, the, the mess sergeant is where Miranda's office was. That's where my bedroom used to be in Mass Effect 1. At my quarters. And so I was like, oh, no, don't need to go there. So. I was like, burp, don't even think about it. Don't even need to worry about it. Wrong game. Okay. I love how shiny it freaking is in here. I don't see why they felt the need to emboss the Cerberus logo onto everything, though. Okay. Oh my gosh! You are wearing what I got you! Oh! So that changes... Because the other one doesn't... I don't think it keeps... It doesn't keep it changed on the ship. Maybe Commander, it does. What can I do for you? Uh... Anything I should know regarding the Normandy? The crew's working well, and the ship appears to be performing to specifications. I really like the thing on her face. I like that. I, um, I think, I don't know, sort of spoilery. In Mass Effect 3, I end up getting a, uh, a helmet that kind of does that, and I like it a lot. What exactly are your duties, aside from keeping an eye on me? Ha-ha! I'm the elusive man's agent. You're his most important asset. My job is to make sure you succeed. Aside from that... I send regular reports to the elusive man, updating our status. Do you have a minute, Miranda? No doubt you've got a lot of questions. Cerberus isn't as evil as most people believe. If I can help allay any of your concerns, I'd be happy to do so. Your hair is so, fantastic! What would you like to know? Your hair is fantastic! Are you military or political? Or both? Cerberus has several divisions. Political, military, scientific... But we're all working towards the same goal. The teams you encountered before your accident were mostly part of our military accident. division. But not all Cerberus operations use the same protocols. We try not to get bogged down in bureaucracy or formality. You know what's funny? Is I could never place where her accent was from. And then I think... Again, I don't think it's like a spoiler, but in Mass Effect 3 I think you figure out it's Australian. And what's really funny is I, I listen to this podcast that has an Australian guy on it, and I didn't realize he was from Australia either. But I was like, it's not British, but it's not black, and I couldn't figure out what it was. And I finally figured it out. I had to, like, look it up everywhere, and everyone was, like, super basic, and I just kind of figured it out, and it was like, oh, okay, he's Australian. And I was like, this is so weird for me, because I grew up on um, Crocodile Hunter. I would come home every day after school, and I would go... And I would watch Animal Planet. I'd watch Emergency Vets. And I would watch uh, Crocodile Hunter. And I don't know if it's just like that him, the like Crocodile Hunter, and Crocodile Dundee. But the Australian accent I always expect is like really overdone, I guess. Like I, 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 I'm learning that it's well, really just like over the top. Or just it's kind of a dialect thing too. Because in England, like the British accent isn't the same everywhere you go. It's like each little air district has its own like dialect and um so i guess it just kind of depends on where you're at in australia maybe there are some people who talk like that like in you know america you got like the in the south you know and they speak with this really overdone like southern accent you know and and then you know the north and you know it's a little bit different of their east and west coast so it's never here too i just didn't i just never re i just like i didn't i realized it but i didn't realize how much of the difference it could be sometimes, you know? I'm like, you know, you it's like, you know, I knew about it, like, theoretically. I'm like, oh, yes, everybody's very different and blah, 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 blah. But actually figuring it out was, was really kind of cool. I was like, oh, hey, like, that's that's cool. Like, I didn't expect that. That was long. Sorry. I know what we're doing here, but what's Cerberus's long-term goal? The advancement of the human race. Nothing more, nothing less. She's got pretty eyes, too. Gray. That's cool. The Asari have their legendary commandos for stealth and recon operations. Cerberus is humanity's answer to those organizations. No, it's not. The Alliance is. <laughs> no, it's not. Because most people don't like Cerberus. But those organizations are regulated by governments. Exactly. They're government. They're, they're completely check. different. You're Nobody. a vigilante group. We're privately funded, and our backers trust the elusive man to make the right decisions. But he's very clear about our goals. Protect humanity and serve its advancement. What kind of resources does Cerberus have? We're very well funded, I have a block though I on doubt that. anyone other than the elusive man knows exactly how well. But our resources aren't unlimited. Reviving you and rebuilding the Normandy was a significant investment. And a significant risk. We're all hoping you can do the impossible, Shepard. 
No pressure. She's got like binders over there. That's funny. She's got three monitors. Triple monitors. Nice. What can you tell me about the elusive man? Not much that you don't elusive already know. Elusive man. Even I don't have access to most of his background. And you've seen more of him than most ever do. It's rare for him to become directly involved in missions, but you're something special. Whatever else people might say about him, I can assure you he's got humanity's best interests at heart. That includes you and me. How can you be sure of that if you know so little about him? I didn't get to where I am without knowing how to gauge people's motives and ambitions. Even from brief encounters. He's no saint, and he'd be the first to admit it. But he is committed. Humanity couldn't have a better advocate. And I think in some ways, that is very true. In a lot of ways. Things may change eventually, but not in the way that you would think they would. The elusive man isn't evil. He does... At... Till the end, he has humanity's... Like, he, he always will have humanity's best interests at heart. It's just sometimes that can, that desire to protect can get a little bit skewed. Is that it that we had over there? By the way, I love the Australian accent. It's awesome. I love hers. I love all of them. I probably would never go there because everything there wants to kill you. But when I was a kid, I wanted nothing more than to go to Australia because I watched Crocodile Hunter every day and I thought he was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Tell me about yourself, Miranda. Well, I guess that's fair. I've spent the last two years learning everything there is to know about you. Well, you should probably know that I've had extensive genetic modification. Me too, I think! Not my decision, but I make the most of it. It's one of the reasons yes, the you do. man handpicked me. I'm very good at just about anything I choose to do. I'm like, oh, snap. It's not, she's not being cocky, I don't think. She's just, that's just how it is what for her. What level of genetic modification are we talking about? That's very thorough. Physically, I'm superior in many ways. I heal quickly and I'll likely live half again as long as the average human. My biotic abilities are also very advanced. For a human. Add to that some of the best training and education money can buy and... Well, it's pretty impressive, really. It is, but she's not... She doesn't ever sound like... I don't know, maybe, maybe if you're just starting to play. And I think in the beginning, I was inclined to be sympathetic towards her because she is so cold. But there is something in her... It's not like some of the characters in Dragon Age Origins where I'm like, you have nothing worth of value in you, you know? But, like, Miranda does, like, she's very complex, and it, she appears that way even though she appears very cold, too. You know, like, standoffish. It sounds like you were designed to be perfect. Maybe. But I'm not. I'm still human, Shepard. I make mistakes like everyone else. And when I do, the consequences are severe. Everyone expects it's a true. lot from someone with my... abilities. And now I'm like, you're cocky. No, it's true. Like, if you, the more power and responsibility you have, like, you're not, nobody's perfect. Not even AI, you know? Like, stuff goes wrong with programming or something, you know? But when people in power or with a lot of responsibilities or abilities make a mistake, that's when things kind of go really downhill. You certainly don't lack for confidence. It's just a fact. My reflexes, my strength, even my looks, and it pans all up. To give me an edge. Don't worry about it. No point in hiding from it. I'd given you bad A armor. See the most dangerous, risky, and technically demanding operations Cerberus undertakes, and it's why I was assigned to you. It's my job to make sure you succeed, Shepard. Thanks for the information, Miranda. I'll talk to you later. Of course, Commander. Whatever you need. It's just uh, I I don't know. I I like Miranda. She's got a nice view. Of here. Also, I guess you could say she's got a nice view of her body, I guess. But I put her in bad A armor, so now it's not so blatantly obvious. Okay. Man, that took forever. Let's at least get to Omega. I know there was a big deal made when it, when this game first came out about Miranda being, you know, way too sexy or whatever. But it's like, I don't like, it, it's like, yeah, there's a lot of butt shots or whatever, which is funny. It's like not like her boobs or whatever. There's a lot of butt shots. I'm like, but you get some butt shots of Jacob too in the beginning, you know? Like it's just the way I think. But the camera is designed. I think they've focused on her on the, on her sex appeal. But the funny thing is, is I talk, I talk with a friend about this as well. Is that she never really appears. She doesn't try to seduce you or anybody else. She is very distant. Um. And now I'm, oh man, I'm on Mass Effect 1 still, where X was backing out, and B was 
where, where, where like you would exit the whole thing, but now they've switched it, so I'm gonna mess up for sure. Um, I think I'm all fold up on stuff, but um, no, but anyway, no, she. Like, I never get the, like, she says that she uses her body to her advantage, but I think she just, she uses it to her advantage in that she, every eye in the room is drawn to her initially, not just because of the way she looks, but she exudes confidence. She is confident, and she is cold, and she is calculating. And that's, like, that's what she, the way she appears, that's the way she wants to appear. She never, like tries to like even a, the ma the male shepherd she never like tries to use her sex appeal to get her way or anything she doesn't she's not a stripper she is a soldier like she is a she's a, a very intelligent calculating and like she's fantastic i like think i think and i think her body only gives her the edge you know it's not like she's ever said and i don't think she's ever been had to use her body to like you know sex her way into a situation or sex her way out you know what i mean like she can she can think of other scenarios like she can think of other ways to get out of a situation so i don't know i i just never got the impression ever that she was like this like sex appeal stripper just to have around for looks like i don't know that's just that's just me i don't know Station's been idle. Original elegant design? It was not- what? No, it was not an elegant design. It was a hollowed out asteroid. 7.8 million people there in a governmentless zone. It's like a freaking death jellyfish. It's a death- de death fish. Death jellyfish. Death jelly. In space. A space jellyfish of death. This part, actually, I love that. <sighs> Flying through, it kind of reminds me, that's what it reminds me of, it reminds me of the Star Wars. Which, the first Star Wars, the, no, second Star Wars, no. Yeah, the second one, I think, where they're on the cloud planet. I'm not like a, a hyper, super duper Star Wars massive fan. I just liked it growing up. And I liked the new movie that came out recently, actually. I was thinking I wouldn't like it, but I did. Let's bring... I don't know. I don't usually bring Miranda. I don't usually bring her. But I feel like her and Kasumi would be an interesting... And Miranda would actually be a really good person to bring because her abilities benefit the team. You know what I mean? So I might have to bring her more. No. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to worry about it. I don't think we have any guns. Okay. Ooh, look at my armor! Ah, welcome to Omega. You're new here, aren't you? I can always tell. Allow me to... Oh, hello, Mocklin. I was just... Leave, Fargot. Now. <laughs> oh, of course, Mocklin. Whatever she wants. Blasted scavengers. Welcome to Omega, Shepard. You know who I am? Of course. We had you tagged the moment you entered the Terminus systems. I You're have a highly advanced stealth think. ship. Aria wants to know what brings a dead specter to Omega. I suggest you go to Afterlife now and present yourself. Cut the attitude. I'm not here to cause problems for Omega. Things explode around you, Shepard. You can't blame Aria for keeping an eye on you. I can't. Afterlife, now. And I'll go when I feel like it, thank you I'm very much. I'm receiving quarantine warnings about the slums where Dr. Right. Mark Solis runs the clinic. Anticipate resistance at the transport station. Okay. I have also accessed messages between mercenary groups regarding plans to deal with the Archangel. There's a recruiting station at Afterlife that may have information on him. Okay. Let's see if there's an option... To have my helmet off. Okay. Nope. That's not. No. I. I. That scares me. Don't. Oh wait. Actually. Wait. 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 Camera sensitivity. All right. I can mess with that. I don't think you could really mess with that one. At least on the Xbox version. 
Uh, bright. Okay, no, we don't have no film grain. That's good. Depends on what you like. You know, the film grain can be cool, but it's also is whatever. You know, just whatever you feel like. Online, I'm not, I'm not online. I don't think. Um. So there's no like helmet option. Okay. Oh well. No wait. No, you know no. I won't no. Just don't I I like to see your face and stuff. Okay, we'll be okay, and we can skip that. That's nice. Okay. But we just freaking flew away from Omega and then we gotta fly back and blah blah blah. So okay. Alright, so I will actually I'll call this one here and when we get back, at least we've arrived at Omega, right? That's the thing though with Mass Effect is that I, I noticed when I recorded Mass Effect 3 and Mass Effect 1, usually it was, you know, I would come in, I would do a mission, and that would take like a whole episode or more, and then I would go it back to the ship, and talking to everybody took like a whole episode or more. <laughs> so I, I like to kind of split it up, I like to kind of keep it organized like that. Um... But, yeah, thank you all for joining me on this one. When we come back, we will be on Omega. Um, I'll have taken my helmet off, and hopefully the extra 5% health won't be too important. So, um, actually, no, okay, I was going to go talk to Joker. Maybe, maybe I will still go talk to Joker. We'll see. Um, anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for joining me. I will see you in the next one.